All right, so I had someone write in and ask uh, how to create realistic grass in V-Ray for Rhino. Uh, on one of my previous tutorials, the night rendering, I made a kind of pseudo grass texture uh, and it had okay results, but clearly not the best. Uh, and to be honest with you, typically I wouldn't even bother spending time getting photorealistic grass in V-Ray for Rhino. I, I typically use uh, 3D Studio Max for my higher end renderings. Uh, and one tutorial I want to show you is uh, a tutorial from Peter Guthrie, who is a fantastic uh, 3D artist, uh, explaining how he creates this 3D grass, which ultimately comes down to just creating blades of grass and then scattering them, uh, and then painting with a plugin called uh, well, either V-Ray Scatter or, or uh, Multi Scatter, and creating huge fields where it's actual geometry. Um, I gave a shot at doing that in Rhino, uh, but it was just too much, and it was taking eight hours to render just a small sample piece, so clearly that's not the best option. Uh, I then came across a tutorial on Flying Architecture, which is a great website of kind of materials and model resources of creating realistic grass in Rhino. Uh, and from what I can see, it's pretty good results. Um, so at the bottom of this page, which is linked in the description, there's two things. One, a grass model, and two, the textures. And you'll need both of these. Um, but I wasn't quite happy with the way that worked out. Uh, let me show you what that is. So if I open up uh, the flying architecture grass model, uh, you'll see it's just a series of planes that have kind of been intersected with one another. Now I could take these and I could copy them again and again and again and create a field of grass that way and you know as I look at it from the top down, no, it wouldn't wouldn't be filled in, but in a perspectival scene it would be pretty decent. Um, but I found there's actually a better way to do that and, and that's using grasshopper to randomly array this on a surface. Uh, again, uh, this is kind of one of the more intensive tutorials because you'll need a lot of components. Uh, so look in the description below. To array this, uh, we're going to actually use a V-Ray proxy. Uh, again, there's a tutorial on my page here about proxies, um, but the general gist of it is a proxy is a highly reduced amount of geometry. And you can do this with V-Ray 1.5. So if I select this geometry, uh, it's important to note that it already has a grass material applied. I have the grass diffuse and the opacity map here, and so if I were to preview this, you'll see it's just blades of grass. So if I were to take this object and right click, I can write a proxy. You can see here are some of my tests, but I'll say this one, new underscore grass. And I'll say that I want to export it as a single mesh and I'm just going to set its triangle count to 100. That means it's really not much geometry. You can see here it's popped back. This is a proxy object, so when I were to render, it would actually pull in all of this geometry. The next thing I have to do is install Grasshopper, and within Grasshopper I need to install the uh, GH Python, which is Python, a scripting language for Grasshopper, that would be installed under Plugins Components. Then using that, I can go and I've downloaded uh, a definition, which I'll bring over on the screen here. Uh, and this was by LMN Architects. Uh, this is the technical studio, I believe. Uh, they're obviously a little more advanced in Grasshopper than I am. Um, I've you know used it quite a bit, so I'm able to understand what they did. And I by-stepped one thing, so I'll show you what, what's going on here. One, we import proxies. Right now, we just have the one grass proxy, but say you wanted to use tree proxies, you can import 3, 4, 5, 20 uh, proxy objects, and it will randomly pick uh, and, and put them on a piece of geometry. The second thing we need here is the surface. This is the ground that will get the grass scattered on it in our example here. Here, they had a thing that I was able to create even grids on it, and I made a 24 by 22 grid. We can change that. It's a 24 by 24 grid of grass. And then that proxy object, this guy here, would be scattered 24 times in the X and 24 times in a Y, and at every point in between. Uh, but to make it more random, what I did was to take, uh, let's actually, we need to step back. We need to make a ground surface. So to do that, uh, obviously I could just make a plane, right? Something like this. Um, but that's not very realistic. Most of the ground isn't flat. So I'm going to use height field which is a command, 
and I have a height field. This is just a black and white image I made in Photoshop, but if I select this, I can click and drag a ground plane, something maybe like that, and I'm able to specify how tall that ground plane is. So let's say it's 50 centimeters. And now when I look, you can see that the, the white and black values kind of gave a bump to this. So coming back into Grasshopper, I have to specify my surface. So by right-clicking surface, set one surface, this is my ground. Then what I did, and I'll preview this, I have had it create, Grasshopper created a bounding box. Uh, I'm going to turn off this pull so it's easier to understand. Within that bounding box, I said I wanted to populate that with points in 3D. And you can see these are all in space. So what I then did, sorry, this is a little confusing. I made a bounding box. I filled that bounding box with points. I can right-click the N and say how many. I said 500. And then I pulled those points back down to this surface. So those points come here, and I make planes. And from there on, we use their definition. So I'll turn off these two components. Uh, and what that did for me, I'll just minimize Grasshopper, is it randomly arrayed points. So we'll have dense parts of grass and, and uh, kind of sparse parts of grass. And then, let's see, enlarge Grasshopper here. Uh, this is all kind of the magic right here is where all the scripting takes place. Um, but the last thing we have to do is supply the proxy itself. So setting this, there's my proxy, it pops in. Uh, I'm going to kind of get a nice view here, and this is my favorite part. You just click a button, and it will randomly array that proxy at all of these points. So it'll take a second, then it'll freeze, and then magically it'll always be done. Uh, there it's frozen, and then boom. We've got grass everywhere. Uh, so with that in mind, you can see there's a, there's a few sparse areas here, and I guess one issue here is that those planes were oriented kind of flat, just an X and Y plane. So as the ground moves up in a Z dimension, we'll get these stacked areas. One way to fix that would be uh, to somehow orient those planes flat, or that, sorry, orient the planes so that the Z of the plane would be normal to the surface, which could be done, but I'm not going to get into that uh, just for this example. All right, so I'll take a view like this. I'm going to come into my V-Ray options. Uh, I'm just going to load. Uh, just a low setting. Uh, really not interested in having a high res, just want to show you the proof concept here. Uh, I'll override my viewport, get the aspect ratio and lock it, and I'll just do an 800 by 600. Uh, I can close Grasshopper, I no longer need it. I'm not going to do any lights or any real camera, but I'm going to click render and it'll probably take a long time. There's a lot of geometry for it to kind of parse through and figure out. Um, but we'll fast forward through this part and see it on the other side. All right, and it's finished. Um, I wonder if I can get information. That's color. Hmm. I never actually used this feature, but I was going to see how long that actually took. Uh, but that's okay. Um, you can see that in the mid-ground here, we have a, a really great result. I'm even okay with kind of these dark patches like this where it looks like some of the grass is flat. Uh, it's where the high ground is, where we had that tiling that kind of everything stepped up the mountain. And here at the low ground, which actually I think again is, is a, a Z displacement thing. Um, so this technique will work really, really well for uh, flat or mostly flat ground. If you were to actually tile up and down, uh, you'd have to go through and orient that grasshopper, uh, which, let's see if I can show you quickly how to do that. So here we're creating the planes, um, represent a collection of planes from those points. Um, let's do this. Uh, closest point, uh, surface closest point. So what you can do is uh, use these points and pull them to this surface uh, and then here it would give you, uh, well this has geometry all over it so let's see if I can say select proxy. Uh, no, didn't think so. Select 
mesh. I'm going to hide these just so we can see these points. Um, so with Grasshopper, this one here, uh, using the closest point, this is this is kind of a weird thing. These are the points that have been pulled to the surface. This is the closest point on that surface. Really, they're the same point, but uh, if you think about it, let's say there's just an infinitesimally small distance between them. If I made a vector along those two points, from this point here to that point there, that vector would be the z vector, which is the normal of that surface. Um, and so that way we could orient these points by saying uh, uh, plane normal plane normal here and we're gonna say a plane here but then our z vector is this and so if we replaced those planes with these planes uh, they should actually be oriented uh, these will eh, we're getting there but these are actually oriented uh, 90 degrees so they're perpendicular to the surface uh, but that's the technique you would use to actually get that right uh, so this this wouldn't quite work it's much much closer uh, and that would resolve these issues uh, the problem there would become uh, the bending which again you'd have to solve because these things would tile so they would actually be giant facets on those curves uh, I think the long and short of the story is use flat ground I use this technique all the links for all the materials you need are uh, below, and thanks to Flying Architecture, uh, Grasshopper Python, and LMN uh, Architects for the tools and resources they provided. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Uh, like or subscribe to the channel, and you could always email me at c.k.mcadams at gmail.com, or check out my website, ckmca.com. Thanks, I hope it helped.